how much are you worth? How would you answer that question? If someone said, well, how much is Warren Buffett worth? Or, you know, how much is Elon Musk worth? You know, we would give a number, right? So typically in our society, we tie the word worth to a dollar amount, a monetary amount. And so when people say, charge what you're worth, they're saying it's a very confusing statement and it's worth looking at because how much are you worth? Are you worth $100 an hour? Are you worth $10,000 an hour? Are you worth $25 an hour? Who's to say how much you're worth? Well, I hope you make that decision for yourself. And I hope you'll say that there is no number that I can put on what I'm worth. Now, it's interesting that scientists have even looked at this idea of what is the chance of a human being being born? And they came to a number that was one in 400 trillion. <laughs> we get that. The chance of you being born, just looking at science and all the different factors involved, is one in 400 trillion. That is almost impossible that you would have been born. And so how much are you worth? You are worth infinity. You, you, you are worth more than any money in the world. So why are we saying charge what you're worth? Because if we're saying charge what you're worth, nobody could afford you because you are worth more than anything. Now, let's stop saying charge what you're worth or claim your value or stand up for you know, what, what people should pay you. They should pay you infinite amounts because your presence as a human being is worth infinity. So let's get more realistic and more reasonable and more compassionate with what we should be charging, right? So let's look at what are some of the common uh, teachings out there about, about what we should charge. We should charge based on what the market will bear. That's a common economics idea. Charge based on what the market will bear. What does that mean? That means charge as much as you can possibly get away with. Charge as much as people are willing to pay you for. Now, I always like to bring in the golden rule when it comes to doing authentic marketing. So let me ask you the question. Since you are my potential client, right? You are a potential client for George Cow, me. How do you feel if you knew that I was charging the most that I could get away with charging you? It doesn't feel good, right? There's this common idea in business, it's sort of, it's assumed that the business owner is just out to look for himself and the customer and our client should also be aware of the business. There is an adversarial relationship between the business owner and the client that is assumed in typical marketing and business trainings. But that's not how I want to relate to you. I don't want to be looking out for myself and trying to get as much as I can from you. And I, want, I don't want you to be in this position of being afraid of me and wondering what George is gonna charge me. That is not a good relationship for a friend or somebody you wanna uh, have on your team. Somebody, you, and I think that all of us are on, on one team on planet Earth. We're all trying to survive. We're all trying to thrive. And we all need each other to do that. So instead of that typical assumption of we all just look out for ourselves and just you got to beware of each other, what if we brought compassion into this and say, what if I look out for you? And what if you look out for me? What if a business assumed compassion to say, I'm going to be as compassionate as I can to my clients, to my audience. And I expect that they will also be compassionate towards me. I expect that they will also look out for me. And guess what? As I've been doing this experiment called authentic business for the past five years, 
I found that to be true. As I take actions toward bringing compassion into my business, I also notice that you all are looking out for me. And I'm incredibly grateful for that. So how should we charge? What kind of money should we charge? Should we charge what the market will bear? Well, let's look at it this way. What if we charge based on compassion and based on enoughness? What if instead of charging the most we can get away with, we charged the least that we can get away with? What do I mean by that? How much do you need to live? How much do you expect your business to earn you at this time? It might not be all of what you need to live. You might need an alternative income source. And many of you do have that. You have a side job while you build your business. That's probably a good idea. If you don't have savings or not lucky enough to have, you know, spousal support or parental support or other support, probably need a job to pay the bills while you build your business on the side. And so you don't give your business all that much pressure to make all the money for you to live immediately because then you can't be compassionate to your clients because you need to charge them the most that you could possibly get away with because you're trying to get as many of them paying as much as possible so you can live immediately, instantly. You're giving your, your business that much pressure. You're giving yourself that much pressure and you're giving your clients that much pressure. What if instead you say, okay, I'm going to get a side job or two side jobs or whatever you need. And I'm going to not give my business that much pressure to support me right away. Knowing that authentic business means to evolve in a way that is, that keeps that to evolve your business in a way where you can continue to stay true to yourself instead of making compromises in your conscience and in the way that your soul is calling you to do business. And you can. If you do your business authentically, you will be proud of how you do business. You're, you will build an audience who tries to take care of you and it will eventually support you completely. So charge based on enoughness and based on compassion. Now, an important uh, couple of ideas here for you, uh, practical ideas in order to do this. One is right now, let's say you, um, like I said, if you don't need your business to make all the money in the world for you, okay, try to have a side source of income and then charge the least you possibly can for your service. Really, okay, look at, look at your, look at the market, look at, the people in your industry, what is the range of what they're charging? So maybe people in your industry are charging somewhere between $50 at the lowest to $200, $250 for per hour for, for the kind of service that you want to provide. Fine. Then charge at the lower end of that, of that rate. Charge $50 an hour right now. Now, by doing so, you will appear to be a great deal for people. People will go, wow, I can, get, I can get your service at that rate? Amazing. Sign me up. Okay. If they, you know, if you talk with them, they're a good fit. They like who you are. They like the service you provide. What a great deal. $25 an hour, $40 an hour, 50 whatever it is that you are willing to charge at the lower end of your, your range, the, the range of your industry, do that. This will then bring you clients more easily and you'll have a waiting list eventually at that rate. Once you have a waiting list at that rate, you can then raise your rate for the next new client. And you can also inform your current clients that you're gonna raise your rates in three months or six months or whatever. Three months is reasonable. Six months is very you know, compassionate. So you, once you have a waiting list, you raise your rate, let's say it was from 50, now it's 75 for the new clients that come in. And for existing clients, they get 50 at three more months, let's say. Okay. Now, once you have a waiting list at the new rate, 
of 75. Okay, once you have your client roster is full at 75, you raise your rates again, let's say to 90. Okay, and then your waiting list will reduce as people find, oh, you're 90. Okay, maybe I'll go elsewhere or maybe I can't afford it right now. That's okay. All right, you keep raising your rates as you have a waiting list, giving your clients at least three months' notice until you're at a level of enoughness, until you can say goodbye to your, your side jobs and your business can support you on its own until you have enoughness and you can still have a compassionate rate for your clients. Now, in terms of compassion, another important idea is that your one-to-one -one service probably shouldn't be your lowest rate thing that you offer. Do you see what I mean? So if I say, well, I want to have compassion to my clients and, my, and some of my clients can't pay me even $50 an hour, they can pay me $10 an hour, or whatever. So I'm going to charge. So remember, enoughness and compassion have to go hand in hand. So your one-to-one -one doesn't have to be the lowest price thing in your business model. This is why I talk about the importance of business models. You can maybe sell an online course. Maybe you can sell a group program where you can charge less per person, right? That's another way to be compassionate to your audience. So for example, many of you can't afford my one-on-one -on -one rates. That's okay. I, I charge my one-on-one -on -one rate in a way where I won't feel resentful for providing that service given how busy I am. I, only, I actually try to limit my one-on-one -on -one appointments to only a few appointments per week. So I, 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 that's not my bread and butter anymore. I've, I've raised my rates to a point where I purposely priced myself out of most of your range. I, you can't afford me at one-to-one but I have compassionate ways for you to afford my services, my online courses, right? Are lower priced than most people's online courses in my industry, I promise you that. So my online courses are priced compassionately, or you can buy my books if you can't afford my online courses right now or don't wanna spend that much money, or if you can't afford a book or don't wanna read a book, I have so much content for free. That is the ultimate compassionate move, is I have so much free, I mean, you can watch videos of me all day long, for months, you know, I have over a thousand videos. I have, you know, many, many, many articles. Um, so you should have a business model that allows you both enoughness and compassion. So anyway, I hope this is helpful for debunking that idea of charging what you're worth and instead charging based on enoughness and compassion. And then that, that's, that's your, it's your job then to find that business model that allows you to do that. So I hope this video gave you some, gave you some interesting ideas to, to consider. And always, I look forward to seeing your comments and questions below the video. In fact, I'm gonna give you a moment to add a comment below while I go and look at the live comments that are coming in now. And so I'll just let you comment below while I find that here. Okay, so thanks to Thanks for those of you who are joining me live. Miriam, Noel, Kelly, Natalia, Colleen, Kim, and Captain. Uh, thank you so much for your comments, Miriam, Captain, and Colleen. Those are the ones I'm able to see right now. There might be more, but um, yeah. So, you know, Colleen, uh, thank you for this great comment. She wrote, I so agree with your position of not saying charge what you're worth and it's, it, she says that it troubled her for a long time. And she says, I also feel uncomfortable when coaches offer high-end programs and use the rationale, you deserve it. You're worth it. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. I mean, what do you deserve? You deserve, I mean, to me, you are a child of the divine. I mean, you deserve everything. You, <laughs> you deserve way more than high-end programs. But it doesn't mean you should be paying for that stuff, okay? Um, and uh, yeah, Colleen says, I'm a worthy enough human being to deserve to purchase what I need and what feels like good value. I will also, if I sense my self-worth intrinsically rather than needing external validation to be discerning about my finances. It feels like in both the situation you're describing and my example here, the people are playing on the ubiquitous sense of unworthiness that so many of us in our culture feel. Yeah, absolutely. Um, and the unworthiness that many of us feel, unfortunately, 
Some of it comes from marketing. Maybe a lot of it comes from marketing, right? Oh, you want to look pretty? You got to use the skincare product. Oh, you want to look, you know, you want to, you want people to respect you? You got to buy this car. Okay. So marketing has made us feel like we don't fit in. We don't, we don't have a tribe. We don't, we can't be respected unless we spend money doing these things. Right. So, um, yes. Yeah. Thank you for, uh, for your comments, everybody below. I really appreciate it. And for those of you who don't know me, I am George Cow, authentic business coach. I love talking about how do we build a business in a way that we can feel really good about ourselves um, and we can, be, we can know that we are putting out more compassion, more wisdom into the world. So thanks for joining me. I always appreciate your, your presence and uh, your engagement. So, all right, I'll see you in the next video. Until then, I hope you will remember that you are worth infinity. There is no value you can put on your worth. And you also have the ability to charge based on enoughness and compassion. All right. See you in the next video. Take care.